reading uh, for today and I'm going to use a different deck. I'm going to use um, Angels and Ancestors Oracle card by uh, the wonderful Kyle Gray in which is by Lily Moses um, because I just felt like hmm, the Guardian Angels love them, love them and um, it was time for somewhat of a different type of message like I don't know maybe symbolism working with ancestors working with angels all kinds of different things energies and entities if you will I felt like that was a, that was the message and the energy that I wanted to um, to bring today so let's start with uh, grounding the space so um, Get yourself situated with your feet on the floor um, and your eyes down. Lift your toes up, spread them out, push them back down. Just get to where you can feel the edges of your feet. Um, you know, in yoga speak, they talked about four corners, the big toe mound, the um, small toe mound, uh, and then the inner and outer heel. Um, and I suppose if you look at the shape of a foot, um, on the bottom of a foot, you can sort of kind of see it makes a, um, a rectangle. Take a breath in. On your exhale, release anxiety, toughness, tightness, anything that is of a lower vibrational energy, let it go. Another breath in. Exhale, release. Ooh. Another breath in. Hold it. Big sigh out. Whoa. And be in the experience of the rush of oxygen tingling through your tissues. Just follow your breath in and out and in and out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Nothing to fix. Just an exchange of energy coming in and going out. Every breath in, think of something positive. Every breath out. Let go. Hmm. Breathe in. Abundance. Let go of limiting beliefs. Believe, breathe in love. Let go of sadness. Breathe in peace. Let go of agitation. Breathe in ease. ease. Let go of struggle. All those things. Breathe in calm. Let go of chaos. Take a breath in for balance. Let go of disruption. Just keep going like that. Thinking of something positive and you can repeat them. But as you let go on your exhale, whatever it is that needs to be gone should be gone. And three more breaths in and out and in and out. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Let yourself settle back into where you are in your room and pay attention to how you're actually feeling at the moment. If there a difference between you started 
that simple breath and those positive energies coming into yourself and all of the unwanted energies and vibrations leaving. Here's what I know, what I want to share about that. The simplest, easiest, no effort tasks, which we just did in that meditation, and it was meditating, require, uh, 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 is required. That's it. That's all it is required, is what I meant to say. Um, and I'll share that there is nothing wrong, and I'm not knocking the beautiful and creative meditations, visualizations that I've had from incredible spiritual masters that you've probably listened to. Um, and indeed, I'm sent on some glorious mental, emotional trips with those meditations. But the ones where I do what we just did, the inhale of something positive, the exhale of something unwanted, are the most rewarding because they instantly, miraculously, magically place me in a space of here, now, with everything that I am now attracting being positive and everything I am now exhaling, leaving. It's a bit like we can concentrate on something negative, sad, hopeless, helpless, tough engaging and it's almost like the fly that gets stuck in your house and can't get out no matter how you try to you know swat it or open a window to release it it's still in there buzzing and gets on your nerves that's how negative thoughts negative ideas turmoil anxiety all of these things become like this this floaty place that's not good and it takes practice to peel back these layers that we've had, that we've not scraped off and let go of. It can be done, and it can be done relatively quickly, providing there is a dedication to it. Now let me just go a little bit further than that and say, the Debbie Downers of this world Thank you, Rachel Dretch from Saturday Night Live for creating that character. Um, those folks, despons, uh, the ones who are addicted to dramedy um, and debauchery, and they've stuck in it. It has become so much part of their vibrational element, they're not sure who they would be without it. Um, and it's interesting, the journey to uncovering, scraping back the layers upon layers upon layers of judgment. That's what I have spent a lot of time working on. What I know is that judgment comes from forgiveness. Forgiveness for all of the things and the indiscretions that I myself are guilty of. Thinking back to the points in my life that are the most shameful. The points in my life where I know I intentionally did something, thought something, said something, acted in a way that was to negative detriment of someone else. And the first part of that is the internal feeling, the secrecy of knowing that and realising that. And the second part of it is allowing myself to be forgiven for those thoughts, feelings and ideas. Then there was a relief. We can go a step further if you want to, which is incredibly cleansing, not necessary. You're going to get in touch with the person, which might be a little odd, since I've done that twice. Got in touch with somebody who I may or may not have been in touch with or contacted for many years, and express my sorrow in how things ended or how things were or my own participation in that issue. 
The other person is grateful, dumbstruck, not sure what to do with the energy, not sure what to say. And then there's a brief moment is, what was I expecting to happen? Was I expecting instant forgiveness? No. Was I expecting to be relieved of that burden of being that person? Probably. Okay, so what was that about? Another exercise in pleasing myself, getting what I wanted from it. Not necessarily to help the other person. So that's where I say some of this light work, some of this work from spirit world, some of these lessons that we come here to learn. Oof, we may have the greatest of intentions to make a difference and to grow lovingly, caringly. But the other person might not know what to do with it. I'll tell you a real brief story, then we'll get to the message. Um, long years ago, gosh, I don't know, 87, 1988, somewhere in there, I took a weekend experience with a gentleman who was a psychologist. He's now passed into spirit. And the idea was to go through personal growth, to be able to unleash these burdens that we'd had. And very similarly to any personal growth um, seminar you go on, workshop you go on, anything like that, when you are looking to change the habits of a lifetime, you unearth where it all began. And lots of us, if you're of a certain age group, go way back to where we grew up, how we grew up, who we grew up with. Anyway, I'll get to the point. There was an exercise to write a letter to someone who you f felt had wronged you, done something, wasn't quite, didn't understand, what have you. And I wrote this letter to a family member and I sent it. I don't think they knew what to do with it. I think it created a bit of a I issue. I think it created more turmoil than it healed. I think it sent them into a place of this is really weird, odd and strange. Um, so that's my point. As we release and relief ourselves from whatever burdens, the feelings that get stuck, including the ones way back, know that the feeling of relief and the feeling of release is fine. That's the point of it. It isn't to create in other issues beyond it. If that makes sense. All right. I think I've talked enough. Um, let's get to the reading. So these are like old friends, I think. I haven't seen these in a while. I have shuffled. I have set the intention. And incidentally, if you are studying oracle cards or tarot cards or doing something like that, you get quiet with the cards. If it's been a while since you've opened them up and you've got them out of the box, turn them over face up and each one, just go through them, just acknowledge them, see the images and just put your energy to them. And for me, I usually do like a little treatment, prayer, if you will. I set the intention that whatever is gained from the lessons learned from this tool will be dedicated to the growth of all beings in all places. And to the guardians of the four corners, the mother in the earth, the father in the sky, angels, ancestors, sacred ones, thank you. I welcome you here right now with your message. And then I'm going to pull this card because this is the one that's speaking to me right here. Actually, I picked up two. So does there need to be a three? No, nope, these two go together. All right. And I'm just going to, as they are, Turn them right over. Whew. You know, it was weird because I was looking through these this morning and these two cards were the ones that I sat with the longest. They were the ones that I kind of looked at and said good morning to and had this feeling a um, relationship with. So we have where we are, the shapeshifter, transformation and the time to unveil what it is that you're good at, what it is that you are, where your gifts are, 
what you bring to the universe, what you bring to the table, what you bring to your family, what you bring to your job. That's what is being unveiled and revealed right now. Shapeshifters are folks who go a bit further with their career, go a bit further with their job, go a bit further than they would typically be asked to go. And they find ways intuitively to make a difference when sometimes not even asked. It is the ability to be able to manage change, manage thoughts and feelings and ideas without any kind of expectation. It's just something that we do. That's what shapeshifters do. Using their gifts, unveil the light, unveil the things that will help other people. And then we have the energy that we're working with. And in this instance, I'm beginning to say that the Lord, who is sort of an earthbound card, it is solid, masculine energy, a king of the world wearing a crown of antlers, commanding the space commanding the place and it's saying really that if you want to make changes in your life and you want to make changes in your environment and you want to make changes in your workplace or even change your career completely you have to stand firm with your intentions and you've got to take on the appearance the cloak the idea um, of that person so in this instance you know what your gifts are for making changes you know what your gifts are for making um, a difference you've just got to now step up to the plate and stop hiding um, it's quite interesting that these two cards should be ones that I was paying attention to this morning a bit more than most and they're the ones that popped up um, this appear this uh, this speaks to me personally, but I know it's got to be speaking to other people too. Um, I didn't realize until recently when people sit in my chair to get their hair cut, there is a difference. The conversation is different. What I haven't been doing, which I need to do, should do, is to sort of launch something in a new and different way it's emerging it's coming it's sort of right here but how and what it looks like remains to be seen and I think the message I'm getting and I'm sharing with you to see if you get a message we don't have to have it all figured out before we go ping let's go we just have to go it's a bit like you don't have to wonder what's going to happen on a bungee jump you just got to jump Right, my friends, listen, until next time, <laughs> jump and have fun. Lots of love. And thank you so much for your unequivocal support. Bye.